So welcome to uh, Steve Long, uh, Training Commission President, uh, here to update us on all uh, your activities. Hi, Steve. Hi, uh, good to see you again. Um, so, yes, maybe you can kick off by telling us um, what are the benefits of accredited qualifications for federations and their members? Now, in this day and age of um, social media, I think federations face a problem that, uh, you know, anybody can log on to the inter Internet and get all sorts of information, some of which is rubbish, some of which is good. Um, and what clubs and federations do is um, provide leadership uh, and that whole quality assurance. So what we do with our, um, you know, with the training label uh, is very similar to what the safety label does. It, it shows that uh, if somebody claims to be uh, an instructor or a leader, that they actually have been tested by their peers uh, and uh, against the standard. Uh, and we hold the, the, the international standard uh, so that we can see that what a federation delivers is fit for purpose. So that means if somebody holds a qualification that is UI accredited, then they have been uh, trained and assessed as being competent uh, to look after people in, in mountain activities. Um, how can people see which qualifications have been accredited? Well, we've been working now for the last few years on a database. Um, it did take longer than we expected because uh, it's actually quite complex. Um, but we are, I'm pretty confident we should be able to um, demonstrate it uh, at the General Assembly. Um, it's now pretty well uh, good to go. Uh, and it's linked to a world map which shows uh, which countries uh, have engaged with the system. So they've registered and are working towards accreditation and shows which uh, qualifications have already been accredited. So people can easily uh, go online uh, and check for themselves. Great. And which countries is uh, UIAA training currently assisting uh, with the development of qualifications for uh, mountaineering and climbing sports? Well, since the pandemic, there has been uh, a lot of uh, activity which we, you know, we anticipated. So uh, this, since the last General Assembly, uh, we've inspected in uh, Japan, in Mexico, uh, USA and uh, Greece uh, and then we've had various uh, revalidations as well and um, uh, when the database goes live we will be contacting uh, other countries that have, have been accredited in the past and need to revalidate. Um, lastly what is um, the UIA personal skills certificate and who can obtain one? Well I think this is our most exciting uh, development it's certainly been very popular in Hong Kong where um, thousands of people have um, been accredited already uh, with this system. So what we do is um, we provide uh, that extra level of, of quality assurance for the individuals who are members of clubs and federations so that when they attend a uh, training that's been delivered by uh, an accredited instructor, uh, they, uh, if, if, uh, if the instructor works to a syllabus that we recommend as the minimum skills to be a competent party member, uh, then uh, at the end of the course, they can apply for a very short, simple uh, online graduation. And that means they can download a certificate, which is uh, UIA branded and accredited. Brilliant, Steve. Thanks so much for, for that update. Um, we'll see you at the General Assembly, won't we? Absolutely. Yeah, looking forward to it. Now, as a, as a final question, do you want to give us a little update on the on the handbook? Do you want to say a word on that or should we should we leave it there? Uh, I'll say a quick word or two about the handbook. Uh, we are working on a full new edition, which should be out very soon. Um, I would have thought early in New Year. So what we want to do is, is keep the cost absolutely minimal so that uh, the Federation can make a small amount of money, um, but also the, uh, the climbing public can receive, you know, get hold of this book at a very good price. Brilliant, Steve. We'll leave it there. Thanks so much. We'll see you in Turkey. OK, excellent.